Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to part two of what if Naruto was a Senju? Last time we got into Naruto's heritage, the setup for it, and even the connection of the series back to the animated short that sparked the entire idea. But in this video, obviously we're going to go on about what happens after the Academy since the previous video did really go into how his heritage affected his childhood, his childhood, the academy, how he went through the academy, and even inevitably his graduation. Meaning this video is going to set up the rest of OG Naruto. So buckle your seatbelts. And without further ado, let's get this started. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! At first, it would take some time to officialize Naruto's one-team situation or two-member team consisting of only a Genin and a Jonin. So in the political department, it had taken some time before Naruto and Yamato were actually allowed to go on missions. After they are eventually cleared, Yamato would stay close to things like D-rank missions, which consist in the village or take place in the village as a promise to Tsunade to make Naruto think this is some form of team building to sharpen them working together before they go into actual action. Even though I did say that Yamato had nothing left to teach Naruto, there are instead still things Naruto has to learn. Yamato cannot teach him anything new in forms of controlling his wood energy or nature chakra or whatever you want to call it. I know it's not nature energy. I apologize. I misspoke. But you get the gist. Naruto can still learn actual jutsu, things he wouldn't know he'd be able to do by either without either experimenting or being shown that he is capable of performing this. So Yamato would use this as a distraction, splitting out one day missions, one day training in opposed to their usual everyday training so that he could keep Naruto in the village as long as possible. But inevitably, Naruto would probably have a breakout when being given yet another D rank. At this point, it would probably be around his 30th D rank, having lasted about two months he would finally break, demanding that he has some job that actually puts him and Yamato at a test since he understands if he needs to continue doing D-Ranks, but Yamato is a whole Ambu or a whole Jonin. So why they keep putting Yamato down by forcing him to do these menial tasks, he doesn't know. But on part of his sensei, he feels offended. And even on part of himself, he feels he can do at least something more complicated like send me to chop off trees in a forest or something maybe kill a grizzly bear like those always seem to bother people Tsunade would now take a deep breath knowing that this time was always meant to come for Naruto to eventually go out into a real mission she would look over at Aruka who was sweating at this point he would nod and give her a scroll that he had been keeping on him this had been a c-rank mission that seems pretty simple as she would give it to Yamato. She glares at Yamato and says, you know what will happen with Yamato gulping as he knows she means if Naruto gets hurt in any capacity, Yamato will lose his life. So Yamato knows to take care of Naruto. And as he opens the scroll, he himself gasps saying that no, we, we can't take this on immediately. Naruto would jump up saying we could take on anything. So he would open the scroll to see that they will be clearing out a team of bandits with suspected Genin level shinobi. He would not see any problem with this himself as Yamato could obviously take out the Genin with ease and him the bandits since bandits are still just normal people. He would say that okay we'll do it granny as he slaps the scroll back onto the table running off to go prepare for their first mission. Yamato would fall over or at least to lean over as he says why do you have to do this to me lady Tsunade? we both know that there might be higher level shinobi on that quest and then it might be upgraded to a b rank so naruto has a heightened chance of getting hurt he would basically be anime crying at this point as Tsunade would say why so worried tenzo 
I thought you could handle it since you were an Ambu before this. With him merely gulping, saying, Of course, Lady Tsunade, as he would be off. Iruka would finally talk to Lady Tsunade after both Naruto and Tenzo had cleared the way, and would ask why Tsunade would put Naruto on such a high-risk mission after threatening Yamato. She would explain that she's held back Naruto long enough, so giving him a proper mission to test his strength, for he did still graduate two years early and had the ability to do it two years earlier than he already did. So, this is merely her giving him a chance to prove his worth to the village. Iruka would nod in understanding as even though it opposes his opinion, he still thinks Tsunade has a point. Thus, he would step back and continue giving out missions since there's still a lot to do, at least for today. But how exactly this mission would go is unclear. As next we see Naruto, he stands in the middle of a forest in front of a giant tower. He slaps his hands together, screaming, 1,000 wooden clones! As an amount of clones appear, we can only assume to be 1,000. They would jump into the trees and cover the fields, as we see shinobis falling left, right, and center. From brilliant tactics, fighting strategy, and guerrilla warfare, we see that Naruto had defeated every shinobi in sight. What exactly is happening, you might wonder, is this is the final bout of Naruto's tuning exams, an all-out battle royale being witnessed by nobles and daimyo alike. At first, it seems like Naruto had just come in and ended it early, but instead, Naruto, near the start, had run up to the top of this great tower in the middle of the forest. Being observed by Danyo and Noble alike once again, Naruto would have gathered enough chakra to jump down the tower and activate his jutsu, thus ending not only the exam, but impressing every member of the audience, since he had cleared this near single-handedly. As the audience cheer, we see Sensei talking to their student, telling them that they just had off luck. But one particular group stands out. It is led by a man coveted completely in green, with bushy hair bows and a bulb cut. This is Mike Guy and his team. As he says, See, I told you not to participate, no matter how strong you are. For right now, none of you would have been able to defeat Naruto. As one of his students would scream out, Yes, Gai-sensei, but I will become strong enough to one day stand face to face with the young Senju. As the two would have covered into tears, with one exaggerating his own power over that of the Senjus, saying that the Hyuga deserve more presence as they are in fact the strongest clan in Konoha obviously being in pure number, as the Senju and Uchiha, of course, hadn't been in their prime, two of the strongest clans in the world, if not the strongest. And thus, once again, we fade away, as a familiar sight appears. I've seen that mask before. It's the same guy with the orange mask that killed Yamato Sensei. I remember when I had first become a tuning. Me and Yamato Sensei were sent to trap the Three Tails, who had recently either reformed or broken loose. When we ran into some strange individuals wearing black robes with red clouds on them, when he appeared, the two others who had been accompanying the Max Man stood back as he pulled out a chain binded kunai. I remember yelling at him to back away as he plunged into Yamato Sensei's back. <laughs> Naruto, my student, would stop. It's more powerful than you would ever believe. But it's not worth dying here today. <sighs> Head back to the leaf and warn Lady Tsunade that the Akatsuki had made their first move. After the death of his sensei, Yamato, Naruto would proceed to grow a strong hatred for the group that bears red clouds or scarlet clouds upon a black robe, the group we know as the Akatsuki. He would inform his grandmother that this group had in fact attacked a tailed beast and are probably on the route of getting him he himself. 
Thus, she would issue an order to send out immediate notice to all the surrounding villages and also to hear from the mist on the death of their Kage, which was rather spontaneous and unexpected. Later on, after some time had passed, Naruto, who would consider himself done griefing, would be one to put back into the loop on the group and would thus discover that the leaf had found new allies within places like the Cloud, Mist, and other villages like the Sand, who are interested in not only teaming up with the leaf, but making the Shinobi world a better place since the Akatsuki are out for blood. This would also lead to Jiraiya making the discovery outside of the village that the Akatsuki were also responsible for the entire Blood Mist incident and Yagura's tyrannical rule. This would also have left a opening for Mei Terumi, the leader of the rebellion and the cause of the Three Tails release, to become the new Mizukage. And with a new Mizukage comes new alliances. The Mizukage, the Raikage, Hokage, and Kazekage, or at least whom they believe to be, all create a treaty, a treaty of four villages. At first, the Raikage had tried to bring Iwa, or the stone, into the treaty as well, but the old man is still as negligent as ever and would rather deny the help. So the stone is left with two rogue Jinshuriki and need to deal with it on their own. So the rest of the Kage, at least for now, are not interested in helping the stone until they succumb and add to the alliance. This alliance could be the biggest one since the start of time, since the Hokage had also sent word to places like the Waterfall, who also believed that their Jinshuriki is unsafe and would also agree to such terms, you could say. Thus, it would lead us into a situation where the Kage have formed a premature four shinobi alliance or four Kage, four village, four nations alliance, whatever you want to call it, since it is not all nations quite yet. At first, Naruto would be in a state of grief, probably being inactive as a shinobi for months at a time. The only time Naruto would remove himself from his bed is when he very rarely ate and then trained in some sort of a dummy throwing himself fashion. And let me elaborate. He would take it upon himself to take every form of responsibility in sight and push it onto his own shoulders. And for the flashback to Yamato, he was able to visibly see the blade coming yet could still not do anything. So, he had been training jutsu, his own reflexes, and so on and so forth, to either block or take a hit like that, to hopefully save someone's life, as he feels responsible, and even blames not only the Akatsuki, but himself for Yamato's death. But nevertheless, as time goes on, Naruto would train more often, and keep himself secluded less. And within this time frame, his grandmother Tsunade would find time to talk to him. At this point, Tsunade would convince Naruto to come back to the shinobi forces, as not only would he be a lot more safe with other shinobi constantly surrounding him since she is worried for her grandson's health, but she really does think he should continue his shinobi training, even if only to honor his sensei's memory, since she thinks even Yamato would be disappointed in Naruto if he had found out that Naruto had quit being a shinobi because of his death. This would push Naruto enough to want to return to the force, but he would ask to be put into a either larger squad that will take on lesser missions and have a lesser probability of death you know people he can save or on the other hand being put into a solo team where he can do missions alone this is when Tsunade would orchestrate a deal Naruto could go on solo missions and even have a solo squad if he is able to work with a team up until the next tuning exams Naruto would mindlessly agree because this means he could work with a team, meaning either a team of Chunin and a Jonin, or a team of Genin. So either people with enough skill to keep themselves safe, or on the other hand, people that won't be put in that dangerous of a scenario. 
so he would accept and thus be placed on Team 7. I will once again remind you this version of Naruto had graduated early and as of right now is currently a tuning. So him being placed on Team 7 would be some sort of a filler position as in other ways Sasuke and Sakura would have been alone on the team. But through Kakashi asking if Naruto could be placed on his team or even if he could solo train Naruto with the death of his old comrade in Naruto Sensei Yamato or Tenzo. So when the pieces fell together, it all came a front with Naruto now being placed in our Team 7. I would like to point out Naruto would not actually be at the graduation ceremony, but instead in that after the week after the graduation, at that point where they're assigned their senseis, Naruto would be sent by Kakashi, having probably met him prior, to take Sasuke and Sakura up to the roof. Naruto has not actually been on any missions with Kakashi quite yet, but he does have respect for his superiors, so he would do as his sensei commands. So, at first, as Yuruka basically names off all the teams, the first person to actually enter to get a team is Naruto, sporting his Chunin garb. He would say, Team 7, Team 7, Sakura Harano, Sasuke Uchiha, come with me, as he would walk out the door. Obviously, Sasuke does not know who this is, nor does Sakura, or at least at first. After thinking for a second and hearing the surroundings, they can confirm that this is actually Naruto, as in Lord Naruto Senju. Sakura would have heard things of him becoming a shinobi, but had shrugged it off to him probably quitting the academy or something similar. On the other hand, Sasuke had completely forgotten about his old best friend and is now curious. Naruto, at a point, was the only person that could actually keep up with him in the academy, but after the death of his clan, Naruto mysteriously vanished and Sasuke pushed it to the side just like he did the death of those close to him. He forgot about it. On the other hand, we hear whispers from all the clan heads and even some uh, minor students, I guess you could say, that have parents that are even half influential, basically giving us the information that Naruto is actually a tuning. This would hit Sasuke's ears as he's about to leave the room and would say, what, he's a tuning out loud. Sakura would also find it hard to believe as she always acts as Sasuke's tail and they would start sporadically questioning Naruto. He would ignore them and just continue walking, basically forcing them to follow. As the team had left the room and the door had been closed, Iruka would hear his class all go on about how they're so lucky to be on a team with Naruto and so on and so forth, since having an experience shinobi like that, not as your sensei, but as a teammate, will give you a large advantage when it comes around to something like the tuning exams. Maybe Sasuke and Sakura would become tuning quickly. Ino would obviously shut down the Sakura becoming a tuning part, but would definitely support the Sasuke becoming a tuning part still. On the other hand, we hear some whispers and would figure that everyone here is basically voting for Sasuke and Sakura to be this year's tuning, since as they have a teammate that already went through the test, they would be at a large advantage taking part in it themselves. So, to move forward, we see Naruto up on the roof as Sasuke and Sakura would sit. They would ask questions, but he would answer only one. Sasuke would answer, where have you been? With Naruto literally replying with suffering, and thus he did not say anything else. Some hours would pass and more questions about Kakashi's whereabout would float, with even Naruto wondering where the sensei is, for Kakashi to only eventually appear on the roof. This is where we'd get that classical scene of what are your dreams, hopes, desires, and so on and so forth, with everybody giving off their thing. At first, Sakura would ask Kakashi to give an example, but Naruto would step in instead. Saying that his likes have nothing to do with him, his dislikes are very few, and his dreams are unknown to even him, as he would then motion towards Sakura to do her thing. She would say that her likes are, she would laugh, look at Sasuke, her dreams are laugh and look at Sasuke, and then when she gets to dislikes, she'd say, Eno Pig, of course, as she would jump up with a fist of fury, and so on and so forth. 
this would leave Kakashi in a motion of, or a notion of, oh, a fangirl. Not knowing that Naruto was having the exact same thought. But, on the other hand, when Sasuke gets to it, it's somehow even worse than the fangirl. He would explain that his dream is to rebuild his clan and kill a certain someone. And near simultaneously, Naruto and Kakashi would out loud, for accident, say, Oh no, he's an emo. Basically then looking at each other as they didn't expect this. This would leave them both in a giggle as Naruto doesn't usually have these moments. It kind of cheers him up when things like this happen since him and Yamato used to do this a lot. So, Kakashi would explain what would perspire the next day and tell them not to eat. Naruto would laugh at Kakashi, and as Kakashi disappears, Naruto would follow suit. Obviously, retrospect, both of them are using the body flicker. As they get a well distance away from the school, Kakashi would ask Naruto what he had laughed about, with Naruto saying, you know I'm gonna eat, right? Like... I already am a Ganin, I'm forced to be here, uh, I don't know about them, if you want me to help them, sure, I'm not going to tell them what to do, because Yamato-sensei did this test, and so on and so forth, with Kakashi merely giggling, saying, we'll know what to do by tomorrow, as it fades off into the sunset. As the next morning comes, Naruto, as per usual, could be found at his favorite eating place, Ichiraku Ramen. He would discover, a few years ago, that this is the place where Jiraiya had initially come up with the name for his novel's or his first novel's main character. He named him Naruto. And later, Naruto's father, Minato, would name his son that Inversa, as a homage, I guess, to the character himself hoping that his son would just be as great of a warrior as that character was. And Naruto has proven so, at least in Jiraiya's mind. On the other hand, Naruto had just consumed about three bowls of miso ramen, as he would thank Tayuchi, aka the ramen guy, and be off to Team 7's training ground. As he arrives on the training ground, he sees Sakura and Sasuke present, and at first, Sakura would scold Naruto for being late, with Naruto saying, I'm not here for the test. That's you. I've already passed mine. Now, shut the hell up before I punch you in your face so hard that you get knocked the fuck out. Or at least the most similar thing to that that Naruto could say within this situation. As per usual, Kakashi would arrive an hour or two late, maybe even many more hours than that. But as he does, he would explain. He would request Naruto partake in the test and would explain as the test would begin, their goal and only goal is to get one of two bells. One of them would obviously fail, and this failure would be sent not back to the academy, but suspended from all shinobi duties. As Naruto is here, and seeing as he's already a Chunin, he can't be sent back to the academy. Or at least, I would assume not. On the other hand, this is where Kakashi would tell them to start. Everybody would jump back into the trees with Naruto already having the knowledge of what happens within the bell test. So it would probably be a case of Sasuke attacking up front to Kakashi and Kakashi one-sidedly overwhelming him. Sakura most likely still getting caught under a genjutsu, but in this case I do see Naruto breaking her out. On the other hand, I feel Sasuke at this point would have realized that he would not be able to beat Kakashi on his own, so would seek out the stronger of two, being Naruto, to team up to hopefully grab one of the bells. On the other hand, by the time Sasuke reaches Naruto, he would have already have freed Sakura from a genjutsu and made a similar alliance. Sasuke would ask to join this alliance of sorts and in turn offers a... How do I say it? He offers a standstill, as there are three of them and still only two bells. He says the two that are able to grab bells are the two that get to graduate, and they would all mutually agree. But as this agreement is dropped, Naruto would jump out of the trees and walk straight past Kakashi to where we see the food in front of the three stumps. Sakura and Sasuke would shortly follow as they're confused, thinking this might be some sort of strategy to jump Kakashi, but Kakashi would congratulate them on passing the test. 
At first, they would be confused, but Kakashi would go on to explain. The meaning of this test was not actually for them to obtain bells, but to work together as a team. And through the collective effort of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, they had achieved this without actually needing to fight. So thus, he gives his speech about how those who abandon their mission are scum, but those who do such to their friends are even worse than scum. And thus, it leaves them with a life lesson taught. Naruto already chowing into his food, of course, now joined by a hungry Sasuke and Sakura, would sit and have their first meal, I guess, as Team 7. After Naruto had gulped all his food down, he would ask when their first training session would start. And with that out of the way, I really do hope y'all enjoyed today's video where we went over uh, a lot of what led up to Naruto's hatred for the Akatsuki and how this series interacts with the original animated short. I know it's not all that great of an interaction, and I do plan on having the future version of this be a lot more accessible in terms of how you can switch between the animated short and the main series. And I really do hope that this doesn't cause too much of an inconvenience. Uh, but if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to smash a like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. And if you want to interact with me in any way, shape, or form, or even leave a suggestion and I don't respond immediately in the comments, you can always join my server where me and almost 400 other people are fairly active. And we have a great community going over there. So with that out of the way this has been your boy six have a good morning afternoon or night peace until next time nuts we'll meet again in the virtual world where heroes ascend keep the flame of adventure burning bright until next time nuts let's take flight